This is Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Rebecca Vargas. And along with John Scalzi, I'm Don Brennan. Hail, hail, the gang's all here. We're all Got back together. Here. Yes. yes. Loving it. Back Loving it. Back together. It's all good. Hot and steamy I was weekend. Say, please oh my gosh. tell me we had some relief <laughs> this week. Horrible. It was just so thick and yeah. humid yesterday. You just walk outside and it'll. I'm like, are you like sure August. it's September? I know. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, we do have fall coming our way okay, good. this week, so that'll be nice. It won't feel like it fall. It won't feel here. like no, fall, No, not though. even close. No. <laughs> no, hot and steamy here. Again, today we have a chance at a coastal shower during the morning hours with this westerly wind flow bringing that humidity and right off Gulf waters and slapping us in the face with it during this morning and afternoon hours. Uh, most of the rain shower activity, though, I guess is the good news, will be moving into inland areas a little bit later in the afternoon, leaving the coast kind of quiet. So we'll have about a 30% chance of showers today with a daytime high that tops out near 90. Complete forecast details coming up in a few. All right, John, thank you. Taking a look at Suncoast Roadways. Things are looking good in Manatee County, about normal for this time of the morning. A little bit of a hot spot as you approach Cortez Road from the south on 41, so 41 north, and a little bit backed up as you get to 40, uh, Cortez Road there. On 41, everything else is looking pretty good, and as you move into Sarasota County, no issues or delays from north to south county. Our top story this morning, five people are now being questioned in connection to the bombing in the heart of New York City this weekend. This all while investigators are currently on the scene in New Jersey determining if an explosion there is connected to the events in New York. ABC's Ray Ramundi has the latest. The New York metro area on edge this morning. Another device discovered overnight in New Jersey, just miles away from New York City. Five devices found inside of a backpack one of them exploding after bomb experts attempted to disarm it. This while authorities say it was right near the Verrazano Bridge late Sunday night, where FBI agents stopped what they call a vehicle of interest connected to the bombings. Federal authorities trying to get a clearer picture as to who's responsible for placing the device in that Manhattan neighborhood. The explosion, the chaos, all happening on a balmy Saturday night. Law enforcement on the hunt. The evidence we've collected is being taken to our lab at Quantico for review, and we are following every viable lead as we continue to work jointly with the NYPD. Piece by piece, investigators are closely analyzing every particle of debris left, including looking closely at this dumpster, twisted and mangled in the aftermath of the explosion. It was louder than, than thunder, but I could feel like it was just a large boom where the building kind of shook. And I got uh, some type of explosion inside of a garbage can. Meanwhile, federal authorities looking into whether a pipe bomb which exploded in this trash can 60 miles away in New Jersey is related to the bombings in New York City. The word is that both devices are pressure cookers, that they were certainly similar in construct. The explosions and a stabbing rampage over the weekend in the Minnesota Mall, which investigators are calling a potential act of terrorism, sparking renewed fears across the country. New York City is bracing for an onslaught of security with world leaders arriving for the UN General Assembly. Law enforcement officials are strongly encouraging vigilance and to report any suspicious activity. Rary Mundy, ABC News, New York. Back here on the Sun Coast, the Manistee County Sheriff's Office is investigating an early morning drive-by shooting in Sarasota. That is right there on the line of Sarasota and Manistee County. It happened just after 1 o'clock this morning. Deputies say 19-year-old Joseph Roberts was standing outside a home in the 1300 block of Idlewood Court when he heard a vehicle coming down the street. When he turned around, he was shot in the chest by someone inside the car. He was not able to see who it was or describe the car. He was then taken to the hospital where he's being treated now for non-life-threatening injuries. Anyone with information on this shooting is asked to contact the Manatee County Sheriff's Office or Crime Stoppers. A Bradenton woman is behind bars for filing a false report that she planted a bomb in her neighborhood. The Manatee County Sheriff's Office says it happened early yesterday morning in the 7600 block of Bird's Eye Terrace. The Sheriff's Office was dispatched in reference to a bomb threat and nearby homes were evacuated. Deputies say Nuria Gersoy sent her neighbor, Nicholas, a text that there was a bomb on his back porch and it would detonate in one hour. Gersoy admitted the text was an empty threat and she was arrested without incident for false report 
concerning planting a bomb. A man is recovering from injuries after a bar shooting in Bradenton. It happened early yesterday morning at First Haitian Bar, located at 15th Street East near Oniko. And the Manatee County Sheriff's Office says deputies saw evidence of a shooting, but couldn't find a victim right away. Deputies later learned that 24-year-old Christopher Smith was already being treated for injuries at the hospital. He had been shot in the hand at the bar by an unknown gunman. The suspect was reported to be in his late 20s to early 30s and wearing a white shirt and dark jeans. Anyone with any information is asked to contact Crime Stoppers. In Manatee County teaming up with FEMA to get an idea how much damage was left behind by Tropical Storm Hermine. Yeah, officials have been touring dozens of neighborhoods to determine if the county should receive federal relief for those affected by the storm. ABC 7's Dwayne Lindo has the latest. Jane Springhouse of Park Acres Estates in Bradenton is still feeling the effects after her home was flooded by Hermine. I have been a, a wreck. Her kitchen and most of her home gutted out. And just across the street at Burgundy Condominiums, Nancy Sitter watched in horror as her home was being destroyed. But after the water came through, it took everything with it, and it took the guard, it took the pillows, it took, and everything just floated away. Many of her neighbors in the complex have similar stories as personal items were laid out after homes were flooded. The Federal Emergency Management Agency took the week to assess damage caused by Hermine. And while in the county, FEMA's main focus, talking with residents affected by the storm. This is all about how much damage did you sustain? What was affected from their perception? How deep was the water? And also some basic questions like, did they have flood insurance? Manatee County's emergency management chief, Don Hermy, says FEMA determined the storm caused a little over $1.1 million worth of damage after completing a tour of the county's public infrastructure. But the county must prove there was more damage to receive what's called a presidential declaration, where federal relief will trickle down to communities such as Pine Acres and Burgundy. Our goal is to get to 1.3. We are still collecting information, and we do have the opportunity with FEMA to submit information on further damages that they did not see when they were here. Overall, the state of Florida must show they sustained a minimum of $25 million worth of damage. Next week, FEMA, along with the U.S. Corps of Engineers, will look at coastal areas in the county to assess damage. They look at the beaches, they look at the erosion, and because we are a major tourism destination, we want to focus in on is there a renourishment opportunity with any kind of FEMA declaration that may occur. Dwayne Lindo, ABC7, your Suncoast News. In Venice, residents and drivers near the Calle de Toro alleyway can expect lane closures and traffic delays over the next six to eight weeks. The alleyway is adjacent to East Venice Avenue near the US 41 bypass. Beginning today, Florida Power and Light will be working on a project to harden the power poles in the area from Grove Street to Seaboard Avenue. The new poles will be better protected from storm damage. There will be periodic lane closures and tra traffic delays in the area due to the project. In Manatee County, 44th Avenue East at 19th Street Court East will be closed for the next five weeks due to another project. The intersection will be closed as work gets underway to improve the intersection as part of the 44th Avenue East project. Work is expected to be complete and the intersections will reopen on October 24th. Fathers and father figures will be taking over Manatee Elementary School this morning. The school is hosting a million father march from 730 to 9 a.m. And it's part of a year long commitment to get dads involved in their child's educational success. Fathers have pledged to play an active role in their child's academics, volunteer at the school, meet with their teachers and mentor their child. The movement was originally started by the Black Star Project in Chicago. Nothing like having your daddy involved, so yeah. I like to see that. Uh, it definitely helps. They definitely <laughs> show improvement when somebody is involved, exactly. when both parents especially. In the Anna Maria Island beaches, they're a little cleaner today because other people got involved. The group of volunteers spent the weekend picking up litter and spreading the word about wildlife safety. The group says it tries to organize beach cleanups monthly to raise awareness about the impact of beach litter on threatened wildlife like sea turtles and certain shorebirds. Volunteers say as the tourism numbers rise, it can become harder and harder to keep the beaches clear.
All the shorebirds are subject to possibly eating trash, but in addition, it keeps our crow colony kind of rich when there is food and trash on the beach, and the crows predate our nesting threatened species that we have of the black skimmers, the snowy plovers, and the least terns. So um, it's just our way to kind of year-round keep the beach going. National Coastal Cleanup Day was technically on Saturday, but volunteers extended the holiday by one more day on Anna Maria Island. Because they want it to be extra clean. Extra clean. And it's sure. amazing how, you know, messy and dirty it can get. Yes. I'm changing my name, by the way. Uh -oh. Snowy Clover. <laughs> right. I like that. That's a cute That's little a great name. great name, right? Snowy Clover. A new handle for Johnny. Now yeah. you're right. Exactly. Uh, we, got, uh, we got some humidity out there. Yeah. We got some thick humidity out there. Got some showers building, too, a little bit later on, I think, especially in inland areas. Talk about that in a second. Also coming up, it was no day at the beach for surfers at New Smyrna Beach this weekend after multiple people are attacked by sharks. We have that story coming up. Stand out in your new wild Lexus. Lease a new 2016 Lexus ES350 for only $329 or enjoy 0.9% APR, just $329, exclusively at Wild Lexus of Sarasota on Clark Road. Hi, friends. I'm Linda Carson from ABC7 and the Suncoast View. Bring your blankets and your dance moves and join me this Friday at the Van Wazel for Friday Fest on the Bay. Manatee County favorite Dr. Dave Band will be rocking the stage with your classic rock, country, and blues. We'll be outside the Van Wazel Performing Arts Hall with food, friends, and fun until the sun goes down. For more information, call this number or visit benwazel.org and the Suncoast scene page at mysuncoast.com. You only have one life. Are you gambling with it? One in three adults have high blood pressure. Not knowing your numbers could cause you to lose big time. Luckily, you can turn the odds in your favor by getting your blood pressure checked today. Don't leave your health to chance. Learn more at heart.org slash HPV. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. Attention blood clot filter patients. Surgically implanted blood clot filters are potentially life-threatening. Some filters are prone to breaking, resulting in pieces of the filter moving through the body and causing internal bleeding. If you had surgery to implant a blood clot filter, you may be entitled to a cash award, even if you haven't suffered side effects yet. Call the Gold Shield Group now, 888-747-5291, to see if you qualify for a cash award, 888-747-5291. Stand out in your new wild Lexus. Lease a new 2016 Lexus RX350 for only $419 or enjoy 0.9% APR. Just $419 exclusively at Wild Lexus of Sarasota on Clark Road. Now, the official Suncoast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. Yeah, so I've gotten emails about when it's going to get a little cooler around here, but I'll tell you what, even though this week is the first week of fall, at least it starts on Thursday, it's going to feel anything but fall-like across the region. We're at 80 degrees already at this time of morning with a dew point of 76 degrees. That is a really thick dew point. That means a lot of humidity in the air, a lot of moisture in the air bringing us high humidity. We have 87% uh, in fact relative humidity at this hour. East wind blows at about five. That east wind will shift a little bit more westerly I think and what that will do will bring in a few coastal showers during the second half of the morning particularly although we've had a few kind of try to make their way in around the mouth of Charlotte Harbor. 76 Wachula, Arcadia, 77 in Mayaka, Lakewood Ranch, Parish, Bradenton, 
78 in Venice and Inglewood, 77 in Northport and in Punta Gorda, you've got 77 as well. Longbow Key coming in at 81 degrees. So across the deep south and the mid-Atlantic, your eye may be drawn to this little bit of spin right here. That's Julia. It's no longer a tropical system. It's what we call post-tropical. And it still is influencing the weather of the eastern seaboard. It's just not tropical in nature, that's all. Uh, it will kind of help to suppress our thunderstorm activity. And, and here's why. Down the road, this kind of spin will produce a more northerly or northwesterly wind aloft. And that may help to draw down some slightly drier air. And if it does that, I think we'll limit our rainfall chances, even though it still feels very summer-like out there. And even though we do have this really high humidity, it may limit our rain chances to about 30-40% this week. And that's going to persist, I think, right into at least Thursday, first day of fall. For today, we have a big ridge of high pressure sitting back to the west, which directs our winds pretty much out of the west. And what that will do will bring us a chance of those morning showers. You know how that goes with a west wind here in Florida this time of year. You get that wind off the Gulf waters that tends to favor a shower or two right along the coastline during the morning hours. And then with a sea breeze building in the afternoon, it pushes everything well inland. And that'll be the case again today. What's left of Julia still spinning around out there. We have a trough of low pressure. In fact, there'll be a series of little cold fronts kind of pushing through the northeast. And while it's rainy there today, tomorrow it will dry out and it will be beautiful for the week ahead. Scattered showers along the coastline this morning means if you're traveling to the Delmarva or to the tri-state region, you may have some airport delays because of some shower, maybe even thunderstorm activity. High pressure back to our west brings us that westerly wind.